so I'm just sitting here on the side of the lake, lake uh, having finished uh, another great lunch and it's time for coffee and I thought I'd share with you what I'm going to be using for making coffee today but first uh, the lunch I had was another one of the wild Zora meals and this one it was the mountain beef stew and I have a review of this under a separate video if you have any interest in fact I brought out a couple of things from wild Zora today so with my coffee I'm going to have for dessert uh, some of Wild Zora's real fruit snacks. This is from her collection. This is the tropical fruit mix. I've had quite a few of, of these already. This is a brand new package. I haven't tried this one yet, so I'll uh, open that up and give it a try. But uh, what I wanted to do was to share with you how I made lunch today and what I used and how I'm what I'm going to use for making coffee. So about six years ago, maybe a little longer, my older daughter brought me a Christmas gift that uh, was not something that I would have considered buying for myself, but when she gave it to me, I really appreciated what it was. And what she gave me was a eating set from the Cedar Summit, and it's from their X line. Now, the Cedar Summit X line are all silicone-based not utensils, bowls, cups, mugs, that type of thing, that fold down flat when, when they're not in use and store very well. So I don't take them out all the time. It's, it's not traditional looking. That's not necessarily the reason. It's just that I have so many other things. But once in a while, when I want to travel with a little light and a little compact, I'll bring these out. So that's what I did today. So I'll share with you what part of what she gave me, and I've added a couple of items to it. So I put everything in a small stuff sack that I made for myself. And in that stuff sack, I have basically everything I used for my lunch today and what I'm going to use not only to drink my coffee from, but make my coffee with. So this is also from the X, serve, uh, X series. This is the bowl and uh, not bowl, sorry, this is a pot. So this is a two liter pot that folds down on itself and opens up. Again, this is not a, really a review so much as a show and tell. And I'll put the lid down and inside of the bowl, let me extend the bowl open first so you can see what that looks like. So the bowl is two liters, as I mentioned, comes with a nice lid. And you get it fully extended. There. So it's a two liter bowl. It has an anodized aluminum bottom on it. So this is intended for use with gas stoves. Uh, I've used it on a small bro a butane stove today. You could use it on an alcohol stove, but I would not put this on an open fire because uh, just the risk of having the fire reach up and hit the silicone. So it's, it's not necessary. It has strain holes in it to allow you to pour out if you're making pastas. And as I mentioned, these little tabs on the side lock the lid on for, for storage and transport. And it works really well. Now, you know, the anodized, anodized interior of the aluminum, I think I could probably use this as a fry pan as, as well if I wanted to. Uh, it's not something I've tried yet. I may. I may try it yet. But it's all got markings, graduated markings inside, both in metric as well as imperial. So on one side, right up to five cups. Although they say the max safe fill is four cups or one liter. So it's max actually it maxes out at 1.25 liter so it's not a two liter pot at all it's a safe use at one liter and uh, i bought this instead of the kettle because i thought the kettle you know i can boil water in it but i can't cook in it easily this i can boil water for my coffee as well as cook in so that's why i bought that now what else it came with all nestled together is the bowl I used for lunch today. Another silicone item, all collapses down on itself. It has a hard plastic base that you can lay down, keeps it nice and stable, works very well. And a mug. Now the mug doesn't have a hard base, but it has a hard rim around the top up here. And uh, that's what I had some uh, iced tea in that I made here on the lakeshore a little while ago, and I'm going to have my coffee in now. Uh, one thing I can say from experience with these is because it's narrow, more narrow towards the base than it is at the, at the top, it can be a little tippy. I've lost my uh, coffee more than once, so you have to be careful where you set it that you don't knock it over. Otherwise, it works well, and that silicone does keep things warm for quite a while. I did add something to this set to make it a little bit more functional during the winter time. It's something I bought off of eBay, which was silicone lid. So just a very light silicone lid that I can drop down on top of the mug and this one on top of the bowl. And they go in with me in, or in the, in the stuff sack on top of the, the set and don't take up very much space. 
Last thing I carry in that set is a, a fork spoon. It's not a, sp a spoon or a spork. It's actually a fork and a spoon, two separate items that can be attached together to make a spork, if you will. Spoon at one end, fork at the other. Similar to the Light My Fire, but better. Much more high durable, much higher quality. A little bit longer with the ability to be taken apart and stored together in a smaller form factor. And this is made by Human Gear. So I think I can probably find links to where I bought all these things. I picked this up at Mountain Equipment Co-op here in Halifax, but I know they're available on uh, Amazon as well. All right, one last thing, and that is how am I going to make my coffee today? So I've not used this before, but this is also something from that same X series from C to Summit, and that is a pour over coffee device. So I'm looking forward to trying this because it all fits together very nicely in that one small kit. So give me a second. I'm going to set up here on the shore. I'm going to get some water heated up and we'll make some coffee. And my water is quickly heating up here in the uh, Cedar Summit pot that I showed you a minute ago. And I thought I would uh, just get the coffee ready. So something else I want to share with you is so I did a separate video on this as well. This is something that a friend of mine sent me as a, a thank you. So I'm going to do a repeat shout out to Rob Young of the Craft at Woodsman who sent me a couple of things and one of them was this little coffee pouch. Now I didn't put the coffee in this, it's, it's, it's a nice quality canvas, but I didn't put the coffee in it directly. I might carry beans in it, but I don't think I'd carry ground coffee. So what I did is I put the little can that I've been carrying my coffee in, in there. But it did come with a spoon, and uh, that's what I'll be using to measure out the coffee with today. So once again, Rampage Coffee. I have not found anything better. I like the fact that it is a Canadian company. And if you're interested at all in Rampage, I do have a video link, and I'll put it up in the corner, to my original review of the Rampage Coffee. So I'm still enjoying the Rampage. That's what I bring out with me in this nice little tin. And this, again, is the pour-over device from Sea to Summit. Oh, that smells good. And I pre-measured. I just ground this this morning, by the way. How on two, three, four, five, six, seven. I pre-measured this morning, or out how much it would take to make a cup of coffee. So my water should be hot now, just about. And I'm going to be using this as a pour over with the Sea to Summit X Series mug that I showed you as well. I'm noticing though, not having done this boat before, that it is a close fit on top. I'm uh, going to have to have this. It's going to be a little precarious, so I'm going to have to be careful. I do need two hands to pour the water with, so I think I'll find something to support that as well from the side like that, so I don't uh, accidentally tip. This would work well over one of my cooks as or any other mug, like a GSI mug or anything like that. I had hoped it would work well on top of this mug. And we'll see. Is my water boiling? It is boiling. Let me turn that off. Pouring with this uh, bowl is a little tricky. Let's see if I can do this and show you. It's not like holding a kettle. And since this is a pour over, I want to do it slowly. And try to get it all around the coffee. Yeah, it's not sitting really well on top of this mug. I'm not too excited about that, as the weight of the coffee added to it. Uh, it started to tip over a little bit. See if I can do this without making a mess. I think if you filled the whole thing up all at once, it would get too heavy for the for this mug anyway, and want to tip over it. The, the, coffee maker itself is plenty stiff. It's just the mug underneath. It's just about the same diameter as the mug, the base of it is. So pour it a little bit more in. This time I got to give it a little bit of a stir to make sure all the coffee's engaged. Good. So I didn't put a filter in this. This uh, has a stainless steel screen in the bottom. I made sure I ground the coffee just a little coarser than I might if I was using a paper filter. You could put a paper filter in this and use it that way. But when you're out here, it, then you have to do something with the paper filter. If you have an open fire, great, no problem. You can get rid of it. The grounds, I don't mind 
uh, digging a little hole and burying the grounds, but the paper filters, they just don't decompose. I'd end up taking that home. So it's just as easy if I have something that does not have a paper filter. Yeah, how full is that? Oh yeah, I still have room for more coffee yet, or more water. Okay. Not too excited about how this is working out as far as balance goes on top of this mug. I think now I could probably pour one hand it. I'm going to have to hold on to this as it pours through. So this is going to take a minute to pour through and I think what I'll do is I'll just cut away for a second and uh, let this pour through and then we'll, we'll have a few thoughts on this. Okay, I don't mind telling you that took a minute or two to get my coffee ready to drink. It does smell good though. And it tastes good. A little bit of pine leaves in it or pine needles. But a few comments on this. So I have used the Sea to Summit X-Series mug and bowl for as long as I've had it from when my daughter gave it to me. And I started using the pot about a year ago. They make a great combination. Now, as I mentioned, this was the first time I tried using the X-Series pour-over device from Sea to Summit. And here's my initial thoughts on it. I say initial because, to be quite honest, uh, I'm going to have to give it another try or two. Two things. Number one, the diameter of this ring here is almost identical to the diameter of the mug that I'm using it with. It should be bigger. This should be larger in diameter because with the weight of the water inside it wanted to bend in a little bit and then start tipping into the mug. And I nearly lost the coffee once. It's not as stiff as I thought it was either. It could be stiffer here. It does have that same hard ring at the top which is great and it looks a lot like the mug. In fact it's almost identical in size to the mug but for using it on top of the X series mug uh, I can't recommend it at this point anyway. Now the filter inside. By the way the filter is removable if you need to clean it. I don't think I will this time but uh, I did check it out, take it out to, for cleaning once just to try it. I have not made coffee in this before so this is my first time. I ground the coffee a little coarser than I might for paper filter thinking that it needed to be so it wouldn't clog up or too much silt would pass through that stainless steel mesh uh, filter. Truth is about halfway through the water stopped going. It just ran to a drip. It was slow dripping. It wasn't running through with uh, any speed at all. Not enough to get a cup of coffee out of it. So uh, what have I got to say about that? At this point, honestly, I'm not too impressed with this device. It wasn't a cheap device. It's still a little bit late to get my money back on it. And I really do need to play with it and see if I can't get it working with other, uh, other mugs, I think. I have a dollar store one that I've used and it's appeared in a couple of videos. I paid literally one dollar for it. It does require paper filters. That would be the only disadvantage. And it's not a disadvantage. It's just an added thing you have to take care of when you're finished that works better than this. I could try it with paper filters and see what that does. Yeah, that's what I'll do, I think, before I pass final judgment on it. But at this point, folks, I can't say buy it. Now, I paid for these things with my own money, the, or at least the pot and the, and the coffee maker. The, the, the cup and bowl series came from my daughter's a Christmas gift, as I mentioned. They work just fine with the understanding that this has a bit of a narrow base. It's fine for drinking out of. But, uh, yeah, when you buy something that's considered ultra-light and ultra-compact, quite often there are some compromises to be made. And in this case, functionality and stability seem to be the compromises that were made with this. So while I'll have them and continue to use them on occasion, I'll probably go back to using some of my other things like my Kupilka. A little heavier, a little bit bulkier, but a lot more solid and more traditional looking, which is kind of nice. But having said that, that doesn't disappoint me. It's too nice a day to be disappointed. I'm sitting here in the sun thinking, uh, I wish I had some sunscreen with me so I could take my shirt off, get a little sun on the body. But it's a beautiful, beautiful day. Okay, that's all I have to say about this X-Series. It'll appear in yet another video. And uh, 
Yeah, I'll try a few more things before I make a final comment. All right, get out and explore, folks, and take that path less traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.